In March of 2023, I set out on a journey to solo Final Fantasy XIV. Not just playing on my own, but to see how far I could get without ever using market boards, quest rewards, parties, or NPC support. To push it even further, for as long as it was possible, I would clear all of the dungeons and trials with level sync or silence echo to truly experience the game as the Warrior of Light. 265 hours later, A Realm Reborn is finished. There's only one last thing that we have to do, an impossible wall that ruins the account. In Shadowbringers Patch 5.3, the Crystal Tower Raid became mandatory for completing A Realm Reborn. The final three quests of the expansion was locked behind the Crystal Tower. Up until now, we were facing dungeons and trials meant for four or eight people, but this time we were up against something insurmountable. Three raids where the expected number of players is 24. Six healers for, realistically, one main tank. The enemies in here would tear us apart before we could get anywhere. And to make things worse, an alliance raid needs three parties of people to enter, meaning that at the absolute bare minimum, I would need two other players to even begin the raids. And so, for a long time, this was where I planned to end the series, because there was no way to solo the Crystal Tower. But there is a way to solo the Crystal Tower. So after half a year of preparations and planning, the day was set. I was going to clear the Crystal Tower on stream on November 12th and push on towards Heavensward. Before the big day, I needed to actually unlock the Crystal Tower raids and restock on potions and food. I have one bacon bread, zero flint caviar, and 15 max potions. Oh, I do have mega potions. Okay, great. It's been a while, huh? Let's make some X potions, yeah? Since I can't craft max potions and needed to grind Palace of the Dead for them, we take the next best X potions as a replacement. Trying to be a bit tankier for the inevitably unlivable damage, my food of choice was high quality bacon bread. But you know what else makes me tankier for unlivable damage? Liking and subscribing! And then, after a few quests sending me all around Eorzea, the first raid, Labyrinth of the Ancients, was unlocked. I spent the next few hours collecting materials for more potions, trying desperately to get any max potions from Palace of the Dead, until there was nothing left to do. My preparations were complete, and the final grind was at an end. In the blink of an eye, it was time. Starting the stream, there was no turning back. I was clearing this today, and it was finally time to show the world how I would do it. We're, we're gonna just have a quick chat, because this has been a very, very long time coming. Uh, we are at the very far end of everything here. This is further than I thought Solo would ever go, and now we are the, we're, we're truly at the end of A Realm Reborn here. It is, it is a beautiful experience. We've got Crystal Tower left to go, and we have spent a very long time, me and a few others, have spent a very, very long time preparing for this and trying to figure out how we can clear Crystal Tower as Solo. And right here at the very beginning, I will let you know the most important bit. As a lot of people may expect, it is physically impossible to do Crystal Tower Solo because of the bare minimum requirement of having three people total to make the Alliance trade to queue in, and then the Atomos and the final boss of Labyrinth of the Ancients that will require us to have 12 people. With that, in mind, there is one other way to clear Crystal Tower. One other thing that we can do. This challenge, if you didn't know, is based on Old School RuneScape. Uh, Old School RuneScape has an Iron Man mode where you're blocked off from doing pretty much anything with other people. But Old School has an exception that it takes for this, for things that you cannot be expected, that the normal person can't expect to do alone. And for those instances, people are able to go through and experience the content very specifically with other Iron Men. And so today, I would love to introduce to you all 14 of the solo characters that have been doing this challenge alongside me here for the big <laughs> solo Crystal Tower clear. For the many that have been with us since the very beginning, like Hist helping me try and figure out all of the strats for completing dungeons, we've got a full team of solos that are prepared and ready to take on the world. 
So this is this is the party. We take our exception as hard as we possibly can. While I cannot solo Crystal Tower, we can still clear Crystal Tower completely solo with nothing but other solo characters. And just so, just right before we, we get started here, since it seems like my internet is recovered and I can chat a little bit more before we get through this, I'm gonna just give you a quick rundown of what it means for somebody to be here in front of you. For any of these solos that are a part of this alliance, for all of the people here, they have gone through at least each uh, a half hour of sitting down with me to go through all of the stupidest possible little options that could prove to me that they have actually genuinely soloed this. All of them have been verified over a very long period and they are 100% genuine they have suffered just as much as i have and it it is an incredible bit of work from all of them to give you a little insight into our verification process i'm gonna i'm just gonna tell you a few things because it takes way too long to go over all of it with everyone but yeah, part of the verification for all of these solos to make sure that they worked the major bit was with the active help the active help screen will basically just tell me if somebody cheated it's very, very easy with a lot of different sections like the duty section. You've got some things where you have to be a little lenient because somebody can just invite you to a party and you'll get the active help that says participating in parties. But there are other things that will absolutely prove that you have not cleared a dungeon with someone. And those are the active help sections that say, uh, I believe it's specifically the active help for commendations. Everyone is forced to get that active help if they have cleared a dungeon with a party of people. And so this is where all of them are, are genuine solos for as much as we can be genuine. And so we will be facing off against Crystal Tower with the sparse a realm reborn gear that we all have some kenna and pud jolly weapons you're not allowed to be a healer or any class that has the ability to heal someone else how much work did we put into this and how did we have the time um this has been about six months thank you for for stopping in everybody it's time for some labyrinth of the ancients i suppose and good luck to everyone here with three raids ahead of us we turn on level sync and start off in labyrinth of the ancients And we cleared it first try and there was no problems at all. That's the ideal. For first time for many, I'm sure, it's time to see the mechanics for Labyrinth of the Ancients. Why 15 people specifically? Because this is all of the people that had done the challenge and made it in time for CT certification. But yeah, it takes about two to three months of prep for people to get to the point where they can do CT with the, the fancy routing that we have now. Three paths stand between you and the final boss, each being completed in sequence. The first is the Western Path, three sets of ads with poison rising in the arena throughout the fights, a simple and easy start for the first raid. Ads dealt with, we reach the Bone Dragon, one of four major bosses we need to defeat. Walking towards the Fiend, there's one last thing I have to mention. We began the day with one extra rule. I'm the main tank, and if I die, the party wiped, and we we had to restart the fight. Bone Dragon is about as easy as it gets, but you wouldn't believe that from our first run. Miasma Breath puts a disease on anyone hit, reducing the healing they receive from other sources, and the actual problem, reducing their movement speed. He also summons some skeletons, quick and easy to kill, but a big problem in an upcoming mechanic. It only takes around 30 seconds for the boss to go down, and we're... Ah, uh, wait, no. While it's quick to kill, you have to defeat it three times to actually finish the fight. Whenever he's down and resurrecting, the skeletons will return and rush towards the boss. This is a new experience. They are running to the drag- Okay! Oh, go oh my god! <laughs> what just happened? Alright. Yeah, let's not take 4,000 damage, um, just out of nowhere. I think I'm gonna pull the boss doors, maybe. <laughs> maybe just a little bit. <laughs> Every skeleton that manages to reach the dragon will deal a thousand damage to everyone in the arena. Moving the boss away from the center gives your team enough time to stop the skellies before they reach it. With just X potions and ironworks gear, the bone dragon dealt too much damage for me to survive on my own, and we've got our first wipe. 
We can stun the boss. Fun fact. Uh, I won't live long enough to be able to do anything with that information. Oh my god. Okay. So, okay, great. That is very unmanageable. <laughs> First death out of the way, it was obvious that one person tanking wouldn't be enough. The big thing that we're going to have to deal with is that was an insane amount of damage and wow, I don't know how I'm going to be able to tank that on my own. The verdict still isn't down on the question of does streamer have a plan for CT? I guess you're right. I really didn't have a plan coming into this. So we made a plan and changed the rules around a bit. We'd have people provoke the boss in a specific order when the current main tank ran out of mitigations and healing, using a ping in chat to let people know it was time to swap. Bringing the dragon to the north end of the arena, only a few skeletons made it to us, and I survived up to the third phase before I needed a swap. At the last 60%, the bone dragon fills the arena with a new ad, Rotting Eyes. For now, and we've got some rotting eyes! What the heck are these? What do you do? You're fun! Hi! I'm gonna die to the eyeballs! No, I really don't want to die to the eyeballs for real, thank you! Oh god. No mechanics for them, just damaging auto attacks, and shortly after, the bone dragon is defeated. From here, there's a quick change to the rules I mentioned before. Now, instead of just me surviving, if the current main tank or I died, we would have to wipe and restart the fight. West Path finished, we move on to the Eastern, and the real reason we needed so many solos to clear this raid. Within the path of vice stands an enemy I've been dreading since the very beginning. The Atomas. There are three lanes, one for each party of players to go down, each with their own Atomas. Upon starting the fight, the lanes are sealed off and you're stuck in whichever spot you were at when it started. The Atomos are immune to all damage dealt until four people in a different lane are standing on the button that removes its immunity, meaning that to clear this fight one Atomos at a time, you cannot have any less than 12 people. While the Atomos don't do anything on their own to damage you, there's another mechanic we have to worry about. Ads spawn in all three lanes. On their own, they're weak and easy to kill, but these ads are more than that. There is another ad that can be spawned by the Atomos. The Iron Giant. Every attack from the Iron Giant deals 9,999 damage, instantly killing anyone it hits. These will spawn in every lane and wipe us under two conditions. The first is if there aren't at least four people in every lane, enough to make all the Atomos vulnerable. The second, and much more realistic condition, is if every lane has three ads a lot. With three ads, they'll all tether to each other and fuse to become the Iron Giant, ending the attempt. But with our parties, just like every other run of Labyrinth, the Atomos don't pose any threat. The only threat to us at this point is being coordinated enough to have people standing on pads. Okay, Alliance A is done. We have to get back to our, our little pads so that we're, we're all good and then it should be set. Now we just have one more Atomos and we really have to hope that it doesn't enrage. Yes, fantastic. First bit is finished. That went a lot smoother than I expected. That is the bit that has been plaguing my mind since the very, very beginning. Next is Thanatos, a Dullahan with another unique mechanic to damage it. The only people that can harm the Thanatos are those that have been turned into ghosts by one of the three magic pots. The buff from these little critters is the only way the boss can be damaged. They'll turn a party into ghosts for a short period. For everyone that isn't a ghost dealing damage to the boss, there's another problem they have to face. Ads will spawn around the arena, and while normally they target us, this time they're targeting the pots. Even Thanatos will attack the pots, grabbing one with a chain and dragging it in for the kill. If we were a normal group, the pots could be healed to keep them alive, but with no healers in sight, it was a race against time. Thanatos had to die before all three of the pots did. Okay, we've got to get the Sandman. Quick! Quick, stop the Sandman! The little, the little magic guy! Save him! Save the boy! Oh god. Good luck, good luck, good luck, please. Okay. Just barely. Nice. Just barely still alive on the last pot. Actually shocking. That was too close. Too close. So far, things were going well. Only one wipe to the first raid and one more path to do. The northern path. I'm not looking forward to Circus. Labyrinth of the Ancients is the, is the easiest. Definitely the easiest of the set because we have the lowest gear requirements for Labyrinth of the Ancients. The Path of Redemption holds a solid amount of PTSD from myself and all the other solos. Before the boss, we're stopped by an elegant bomb surrounded by three of the hardest bosses we faced early on. Vasago. Imitations of Patrol. The final boss of Zamel Darkhold. A truly painful memory. Grim fate? 
No, don't bring me back to patrol. We're, this is this is PTSD for all of us. I've got an entire instance of people experiencing PTSD right now. No, no, not the patrol mechanics. I can't look at it. I can't look at it again. Aside from that, the fight itself is easy. The Vasago spawn Allegan balloons that head towards the bomb in the center. If they make it, they explode, making the bomb larger. Too many of these, and it will fully wipe the raid. Yeah, easy. Okay, that's the both of them on me. That's tragic. All right, we we wipe. Once all the demons are dead, the bomb is next, and we're on to the behemoth. Four towers sit around the arena, each charging up three rings. Before all three rings appear, someone needs to interact with the tower to release the charge, otherwise it will start dealing stronger and stronger electric damage to everyone in the arena. Additionally, the king behemoth uses a frontal cone that, if placed poorly, can destroy the towers. The less towers there are, the more electric damage you take. Comets will fall on random players, signaling the start of ecliptic meteor. Stand behind the comets or you die. That uh, that's it. The behemoth does a ridiculous amount of damage and spawns iron giants and bombs, but those are the only real scary mechanics. With everyone in the alliance slowly dying, the behemoth goes down. That was absolutely disgusting. And we're on to the final boss. Even with healers, I've seen many tanks die to Phlegathan. Jumping down the pit in the center, we stand before Phlegathan. Right as the fight starts, we're shown a glimpse of his power. Provoking the boss, I get hit by a tank buster and auto attack for nearly 4,000 damage, just about half my health. Thankfully though, his auto attacks are few and far between, as most of his time is spent casting. Vacuum Slash, Megiddo Flames, and Abyssal Slash are much more common than his regular hits. Iron Claws will occasionally spawn, grabbing a party member and holding them in place until the claw is killed. Just like with the Atomos, there are three pads in the arena that require four people to stand on them. But instead of making Phlegathon vulnerable to our attacks, we need to use these so we aren't instantly wiped out by Ancient Flare. While the shield is up, each party will have to fight adds that spawn on their pads. So long as Phlegathon continues to be a lot of AO- Wheeze! Alright, that hurt. Maybe, um, maybe I had spoke too soon. Okay, I- I'm dead. Definitely dead. I need to- no! And so, our first wipe to Phlegathon. Another attempt making it past where we were. At 30%, Phlegathon casts Ancient Flare again, but this time we don't all make it. Okay. I don't think we make it. We didn't? Oh, okay. Tragic. A little too slow on the flares. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's wonderful. Okay. That's that's two for Phlegathon so far. And again, Solo Bunny is dead. We've got a death. And we, yeah, okay. That's full wipe. Another Ancient Flare. I don't know if I make it for this one. I think I'm the, I'm the reason. No, ooh, barely. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice, you know, it's not bad. With the final Flare survived, all that's left is dodging some amped up AoEs and the first raid is finished. Nicely done. Absolutely, insanely well done. Oh my god. First one is finished. And there he is! Solo, soloing Labyrinth of the Ages. Look at that! What a nice shot! Look at that! An empty room! I didn't expect that one. That's crazy. It's so convenient that the Alligans installed a barrier specifically for countering the exact soldier they stationed here. <laughs> After grabbing a quick family photo and completing the quests, the next raid, Circus Tower, is unlocked. Now we're on to the scary stuff. Because Circus Tower is going to be way, way worse than Labyrinth of the Ancients. Circus Tower was released in patch 2.3, two updates after Labyrinth of the Ancients, so the expected item level jumps from level 50 to 70. Bosses were already dealing heavy damage, but it's only going to get worse from here. You know, you never really take the time to just look at Circus Tower. Or just get it in roulettes and you want to rush through, but you know, I can kind of take my time this one. And look around at all the fancy, glowy bits. After a very painful group of dragons and ninjas, we reach the first boss of Circus and the hardest boss fight we'd faced throughout all of the raids, Scylla. Normally an easily forgettable experience, Scylla has been hiding some of the most difficult mechanics in all of Circus Tower. Orbs spawn throughout the fight, tethering to a random player that isn't the main tank. 
Purple orbs need to be brought to any of the three towers to charge them, and each tower needs to be charged three times for a mechanic later on in the fight. Ice orbs approach their tethered target, freezing them once they make contact. This is unavoidable, but you have some time before it happens to make sure you don't mess up the next mechanic. Fire orbs have to be dragged to someone who is frozen by ice, making a large pool of water under them. If someone gets hit by an ice orb while standing on the water, it will freeze them and everyone else around them. Swapping main tank to hist, I turn off tank stance to heal back up before realizing my mistake. I mentioned a second ago that the orbs were random, but that wasn't really true. The orbs will target random people in each party. Since I wasn't main tank anymore, I would always have an orb targeting me. I can be targeted by multiple orbs and frozen twice. The first fire orb only removes one stack, and by the time the second fire orb reached me, my health was so low that it ended up killing me. From the point of view of my dead body, we can see the next attack, Ancient Flare. A much easier one than Phlegathans, just make sure you're standing in the water pools to reduce damage taken. You're getting all this info now at the beginning, but it took us many, many deaths to figure out what was going on. And hey, I'm not, and there it is. Okay, let's take a wipe, please. What else matters about this fight? We've got the freezes that go out. People can get double frozen. People getting double frozen will need two fireballs to get them out. Yeah, and having us kill the staves as well. So kill the staves as fast as we can. I'll probably ask for a tank swap a lot sooner. Maybe when I'm at half health. Get one orb target per alliance. You're getting double frozen because you're the only target in alliance A. The only one who isn't on orb target list is main tank. Okay, so I will always be double frozen. Even more fun. Even more exciting. Good luck. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try to wing it a bit again continuously and then uh, at some point here we will start making a plan if we absolutely have to. I will always be frozen is basically the gist of what I'm understanding right now, but that's fine. No, don't, uh, hey, I'm only one frozen. That's not bad. Okay, we've got one down. We're losing a lot of people, but it's mostly the DPS. None of the, none of the other main tanks died yet. Current main tank is Popota. What is Daybreak? What does that mean? I'm just gonna ramp part. Good luck. Is this a DPS check? There's no way. Petrification, okay. So we turn away, I suppose? Oh no. I'm voking as soon as we're out of this to get it off of Popoto? No, main tank died. Okay, we're done. Right at the very end, our main tank dies before the petrification ends, and after accidentally killing Scylla, we leave and restart. Making our way back, we still hadn't figured it out yet, but I can let you in on what Daybreak is. At 10% health, Scylla begins to cast Daybreak, a raid-wide petrification lasting 15 seconds. The only way to prevent it from happening was to have all three towers fully charged and four players standing on the pads near them to put up a shield. But with our DPS dying one by one to the constant damage Scylla dealt, having enough people alive to activate it wasn't as easy as it sounded. I'm gonna spam my- nope, okay, we're dead. We wipe? Oh my god, I have two- okay, the unholy, great. Oh man. I need to have Rampart up for those, is the actual thing. When I'm frozen, Rampart needs to be turned on so that I can try and survive that. Changing our plan a bit, I wouldn't start as the main tank. Instead, I'd take the boss right before she started to use ice orbs to minimize the chances of me being frozen. It made things more consistent, but in the end, Daybreak ended every attempt that reached it. Main tank is so low, and so low should be fine. We should be okay. We had a lot of delayed time for the hits because Scylla had to walk over. The staff is going to hit me, but it's not going to do much damage. Solo's going to get hit by one. The ads are going to kill. No, that's... Yeah, okay. We're wiped. We're done. Straight to Petrified. I would be amazed if I survived this, but if I survive it, I survive it, I guess. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Solitude is main tank? No, okay. Main tank is dead. Okay, yeah, now we're wiped. Oh, come on! This is ridiculous. Okay, we just gotta make sure the Daybreak pillars are ready. We've got one more for northwest, two for south, and three for northeast. Oh, I might just die to damage here. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just dead to damage. Swap it for daybreak. We're not going to be able to do the daybreak pads. We don't have enough people, but get there anyway to delay the auto attack timing. Somebody else vokes, so we've got a full health tank. At this point, it was looking desperate, and I was willing to get rid of the rule for wipes if the main tank died. I will vogue as soon as... I'll at least vogue the Dark General so it's not spammed over there. Six seconds. I'll vogue Scylla back. Dark General's gonna kill main tank. That's fine. I'll take Scylla. The ads are a bit ridiculous. I think running the ads around is gonna be your best bet, Solo. Good luck. 
<laughs> no, come on, just kill it. Just kill the boss and get us out of here. Please, one percent. Kill boss. No, dude. Am I regretting the vote abandon yet? Uh, no, I'm not regretting the vote abandon. I was happy to do it. It was worth it. For now, uh, we will earn it once again. But then something strange happened. Why is Daybreak not happening? Where is Daybreak? Did I miss the mechanic? No, we could just, we just, just don't take the mechanic for it. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Just out DPS it. Exactly, you're right. It's not like we get Echo. It's not a trial, so just huge DPS. I will happily take that. An hour of attempts, Scylla was finally defeated, and we could move on to the rest of the raid. Now to Glazier, a boss with an arena that suggests it has some crazy attacks. Different platforms cut off from the main stage with what looks like jumping pads to go between them. It's an incredible fight that most runs of Circus will never see, so I'll just let it speak for itself. It was a pleasure to meet you, Glacia. Glacia, you're still losing health at an incredible rate. But wow, do you hurt. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be using up all my max potions. I should really be saving them for World of Darkness, but that's okay. Okay, we've got the, the little robots. Ow! I'm home ganging and I'm hitting the button. So what are the little robot guys? What do they do? Do we kill them? Or do you just have to like stand in their little platforms? I feel like maybe Glacia just doesn't have mechanics. Maybe that's the whole- oh no, what? Here it is. What is this? What am I looking at? Death stream? What is going on? Wait, what, what do we do? What? Is this enraged? Did we fail? Ignorant savages, you will rule the day- you will rue the day you set foot within this boat. Okay, that did like two damage. That's fine. Great. Okay, phase transition. <laughs> what am I- what was that? <laughs> Yo, he's just- okay. He's Krillin, he's got the destructo discs. Spiral sp okay, get me away. I'm leaving. I don't know what that- oh, okay, that's just an in. Alright, that's a- that's a dynamo. That was it? That whole phase change just for this? Just for some destructo discs to go around the arena? Oh, and then he does a spirit bomb. Okay. Even as a 15 person, a 50 person solo, we didn't get to see that much of the mechanics, but that was sick. Yeah, okay. So even with all these restrictions, we'll still never know what Glacia does. Thousands of crystal tower runs and still no real use for Glacia Lobolus platforms. What the heck are the outer platforms for? That's what I wanted to know. That's what I was hoping for. I'm looking at chat instead of the ad, so I'm getting hit by AoEs, but that's fine. They don't do any damage. Following a boss with no mechanics, we reach Amon, the first enemy in the entire raid series where most people know the fight. Aside from dropping AoEs and dealing a lot of damage, Amon's main mechanics are the ads he spawns. The guys? Oh, this is the thing you wanted me to say on stream. These guys. I still refuse, I think. Don't worry, floaty man. I will make you a small gamer like you have always dreamt of being. Dragging a purple orb onto these guys makes them miniature, reducing their damage and health. Amon will also place a bomb on random players. If left alone, it will blow up continuously, dealing damage and knocking back anyone near them. The other adds, the experiments, will attempt to reach Amon, giving raid-wide petrifications or silences if they survive. Next, he did hit me. Good, that was, this was not my intent. The final adds, the giant snakes come with another mechanic. Three players will be frozen in ice, and another three players will be turned into frogs. The frogs need to free the frozen players, and everyone else needs to kill the snakes. The snakes will chase down the frogs, and if they make it, start attacking for 4,000 plus damage per hit. What, what am I looking at? What am I doing? I dropped a lot of orbs on the ground. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. With the snakes gone, three more people are frozen as Amon starts to cast Curtain Call. Ecliptic Meteor from Behemoth, but this time you use your friends as meat shields. Very nice. Amon, easy peasy. Yeah. I'm happy with that one. With Amon dead, we've reached the final boss, Zand. There are only three mechanics we care about. Etherochemical Explosion, Ancient Quagga, and the Meteors. And Zan's DPS is a little ridiculous as well. Oh god. Oh god. 
All right, that's that's too early, so let's wipe this, please. A thorochemical explosion spawns orbs around the arena. Each orb needs at least one person standing with it, or they'll explode for heavy damage to the entire raid. Somewhere near 60%, sand will teleport away and spawn meteors around the arena. The first DPS check. If we don't manage to kill the starfall circles in time, the fight ends. Easy peasy, not even close. I can't even see the meteor looking straight up. Very nice. Then, Ancient Quagga. Three stack markers appear on random players, dropping an AoE that levitates everyone standing in it. If you aren't levitating when Ancient Quagga hits, anyone but a tank would die instantly. To finish things off at 30%, Zand teleports away again, this time summoning twice the amount of meteors. As the final Starfall Circle goes down, there's nothing left. Zand falls shortly after. We've got some dead, so we don't have full coverage on these, but that's okay. Just tank it and we're done. Circus Tower is over. The only real problem from Circus was Scylla. Uh, okay. All right, one more. One more. Another family photo done, the Solos charge forward towards the final raid, and the hardest fight they had ever faced. With a new expected eye level of 90, we've reached the same gear expectations that gave us so much trouble in Keeper of the Lake, and now it was scaled to a 24-player alliance raid. Unequipped gear to cheese roulette can't believe- Listen, I'm sorry, I wanted to do World of Darkness, okay? I, it's my favorite raid. This is the first instance where all of the ads are tethered, it looks like. So just have tanks ready for grabbing an ad. I will take the leftmost. Good luck. Make sure food is back up as well is a good chance for me to remember that, seeing as I pulled the boss and I used the food after. These guys are hurting. It's starting to hurt really bad, and we have to interrupt them as well. We can't let them Ram's voice. Dragon's voice would also be a catastrophe because of how spread out they all are at the moment, but Ram's voice is the big scary one. What the heck is this? I... what is this effect? I love this! From here on, everything was a difficult fight. I won't go into each individual ad, but know that they were all proper battles rather than the small annoyances in the previous dungeons. As Angra appeared before us, tank order was at the top of my mind. It would be more important than ever that every tank in this alliance was ready to take the boss at any moment. I didn't go into it before, but we had a set order to tank bosses in. Starting with me, Hist would be second, then wind up Brist, Solo Popoto, Forgiven Solitude, and ending on Solo. Then the cycle would repeat. Ideally, each tank would survive for long enough that by the time it came back to me, I'd be near full health and have my mitigations ready. Angra is our first big challenge, and a relatively well-known boss. Even normal alliance roulettes will end up wiping to Angra more than anything else. Within the first 10 seconds of the fight, I'm dropped to almost a quarter of my my health. Just before the first mechanic starts, double vision. Two colored sides. Stand on one color to get a stacking debuff. If you get two of the same debuff, you get hit for a large chunk of damage, and if you get three of the same debuff, you die. To avoid this, you have to swap colors back and forth every time it's cast. The only difference between the two debuffs is the face, so I messed up a few times while getting used to it. Level 100 flare is an odd mechanic. One person is targeted by a flare, and everyone within a circle around them becomes tethered. Leave the circle, break the tether, and everything is fine. Otherwise, half your health. The clocks are the easy part. Kill the four hourglasses to reduce the speed of the AoE, then dodge it when it stops spinning. Level 150 death is another odd one, even more so than flare. Same circle and tether, but it's an instant kill. According to the wiki, it only actually kills you if the people inside the circle is a multiple of three, but we never saw it, so who knows? The last thing is Mortal Gaze. If you're facing the boss when it finishes casting, you get a Doom debuff, which will kill you in 10 seconds. The only way to survive is to cleanse it by running over the glowing circles on the floor. I feel like I'm doing this incorrectly. Okay, Solitude is down. I'm about to- yeah. Wow, Angra does a lot of damage. Really gotta get better healers for this solo experience next time. You know, they're terrible. They haven't healed anyone. Everybody's just been dying left and right. With just one wipe to Angra, we saw everything we needed to see to make this fight possible. I stand in the red. I stand in the red this time. Solitude is gonna be next. 
Okay, we've got uh, next vote. We've got some deaths, but not an unbearable amount. I just need to start spamming my mitigation so I can last as long as possible here. Aside from that DC and a few close calls, Angra went down without too many problems. Hello, Scylla 2.0. It's great to see you. Oh, a treasure coffer. Wow. Hey. Another set of ads down, we're on to the five-headed dragon. There are a lot of mechanics in this fight, and I'll be honest with you, even watching the footage back, I still don't really know what was happening. At least his is no longer main tank. Whoa, 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 what was that? The only thing I did know was Discordance. When the dragon starts casting this, all five heads become targetable. You have to kill the heads before the cast finishes or the raid wipes. I'm tanking, I'm tanking. I'll hold it for a minute. Is there any tank left? Solo, I need you to swap. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We just gotta finish this up a little bit. Oh, Hydra's terrible. No, no, that's it. That's a wipe. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We're on to heads. That's fine. Heads is a good time to heal. All right, we're doing a lot better tank HP-wise between these. We're on third tank at this point, which is way better than we had been. Later into the fight, the boss would use Pyretic, meaning no one can move or attack without taking damage for at least 5 seconds, and some little dragons that tether and give stacks of separation, a debuff that reduces your max HP and increases the damage you take. Dang it. Okay. We wiped. Uh, Five-headed is looking like we may need to silence this. With three wipes at just the second boss, morale was low, but all we needed was one good run. Start with a vengeance. I need a lot of mitigations at this early point, because the longer I can last, the better. Way better on tank health this time around. I said that last time too, but that was around 50% compared to the 30% we're at now. Pyretic, stop. Good luck. Popoto needs the swap as soon as we're back. Solitude, yep, point it away and we're good. Last as long as you can, Solitude. I've got it. I'm not letting Solitude die. Okay. Whoo! Hydra down. Before the last two bosses, we're met with a familiar set of faces. The Atomos return, but this time with new mechanics. Each group has to continuously kill their Atomos until the central gemstone loses all its power. While doing that, they'll sneeze and knock you off the platform, but that's it. A few kills per party, and we're moving on. Two fights left. Alliance B goes in belly, Alliance C gets chomped and goes in belly, and Alliance A is also belly. Cerberus is, like Glazia, an incredibly easy boss, and a welcome break after the hours of work leading up to this. Predator Claw gives us a slashing resistance down, forcing us to tank swap early, but there's only one real mechanic for this fight. A Gastric Juice spawns, which minimizes everyone nearby. A Wolf's Bane spawns with a large purple puddle, and everyone that was minimized by the juice stands in the puddle, making Cerberus eat them. Once eaten, they kill some enemies inside of Cerberus. If no one does this, he gains a stacking damage boost that quickly becomes unmanageable. With the adds dead, the minimized players return to their normal size and Cerberus casts Reawakening, another way for him to get the damage boost. Two players grab chains from the far wall and use them on Cerberus to prevent this, but the Reawakening cast is long and ends as soon as the chains are used. Instead of using them immediately, we delay it until the cast is almost finished to get extra damage in and let the tanks heal back up before continuing. Eventually, he breaks back out of his chains and gains a new cast, Alolation. Alolation gives the Abandonment debuff. If you move too far away from the other players, you're feared and start running around, losing all control of your character. Then he starts the Minimize cycle again. I think we can just DPS here. I think we can just clear boss. Yeah, this is good. Not bad. Now, there's only one more fight standing between us and the end. The hardest fight we've ever faced. The Cloud of Darkness. The last eight months of my life have gone into this. It feels so surreal to be here at the end. Fitting for the final boss to be yet another insurmountable challenge. From the very beginning of the fight, we were already beaten. Her auto attacks apply a bleed that lasts for 20 seconds and ticks for 1000 damage. It was barely 5 hits before I needed to use home gang and swap tanks. 
and all it took was one mistake to cause our first wipe. Zero form particle is which? Okay, that's the one, that, okay. Great. Faint particle beam drops AoEs that chase a chosen player around the arena, giving vulnerability stacks to anyone that gets hit. And zero particle beam was what I just died to. A wide laser that hits everything directly in front of the boss. On to the next attempt. The first of many tanks goes down, and we reach meteors. Unlike the previous meteors, this one just requires someone to be standing underneath them to prevent the raid wide damage. Another wipe, this time to bleed damage. A glimpse at the next mechanic, the boss starts spawning and pulling dark clouds towards her. Any that reach her will Will give a stacking damage up so they all need to die before then. Standing between a cloud and the boss will slow its movement, giving just enough time to kill it. Alive again, with a better plan this time, we make it all the way to her final mechanic. Three clouds spawn in glowing hexagons. Soon after this begins, the hexagons will seal, locking you in or, in a worst case, locking you out and preventing you from killing the clouds, ending the fight then and there. And to make things worse, there's a hidden mechanic for this part of the fight. If the damage your raid deals is below a certain amount, Shadow Lurkers spawn with the clouds. Worms that hop from place to place, applying half a dozen debuffs to anyone that gets close. With the clouds dead, the fight continues on, cycling through all of her mechanics until we're dead. For this one, I don't even think it can be a wipe on me. I think we just have to go. We had abandoned everything at this point. Main tank dying didn't matter. My death didn't matter. We just needed to kill this boss no matter what it took. That's all tanks dead. Good luck, DPS. Super close. Come on. Two percent. One percent. The solos are done. Crystal Tower. Is finished. All three alliances done, with nothing but solos, level synced. With nothing but the slimmest of DPS left, barely anyone left alive. <laughs> it's over. Oh my god, it's over. Thank you everyone for taking part in this. Thank you for... very much thank you to all of the solos who have been around for the past few months as we get this to work. And thank you to everybody that's been watching and supporting. I will finish this quest, and with there being no others, we are free. Goodbye, solos. It is time to return to being solo. Half a year of planning, all for this. The MSQ is unlocked, and we can finally finish A Realm Reborn. This series has been everything to me. Absolutely everything. To forge my own path, to love this game like it's brand new again, to do what so many people thought was impossible, has been truly amazing. Here at the end, the words of the Crystal Exarch seem more fitting than anything else. The glory of the heavens was ever beyond the grasp of those who never thought to reach for it. But if I've gained anything from all of this, it is the courage to stretch out my hand. I'll see you in season two.
but this time, this is the end of it. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I'll name you Solo Only. Huh. This is gonna be a long journey, huh, little buddy? Nothing to do but start. <laughs>